guys. Today we're going to be talking about frequency distributions. So frequency distributions are something that you cannot run away from when you're talking about probability or statistics. You're always going to have some data represented in some table. In this case, you have the commute distance to college was recorded to the nearest kilometer for 84 students attending a module statistics. In the following table, the data has been sorted row-wise for your convenience. Right? So you have a row, a row data and uh, each number is representing the distance that a student travels to college, right? So, question one, you complete the frequency distribution below. So you have empty boxes that you have to fill in, and uh, you have a row that is about frequency and a row that is about cumulative frequency. So frequency, the word just means count. So how many uh, do you have in, in that um, range? So here you have a zero to one commute distance, zero to one, and you want to find the frequency. So the frequency to that will be the number of students that will travel zero to one kilometers to college. So you just have to count the numbers. So the, I normally, the first thing that I normally do when I have this is just to know about the table before I start counting or anything like that. It just makes me faster answering the future questions, right? It's just to find out how many numbers are in each row and how many columns are there. There's 14 numbers in each row and then there's one, two, three, four, five, uh, six rows. So I kind of know an idea of the mapping of the data. It makes me, it makes it faster to count. For example, if everything is in the same row, I don't have to count. I just know it's 14. I just cross it off, right? So for example, zero to one, the first row, I just cross it off and I know that's 14 numbers. I don't need to count that. And then I keep counting the other ones that are left. So zero to one, those ones I can count. So from 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and I put the 19 in the box. I do the same for two to five. I cross every number that is two to two to five. And then I just count it. Usually I count twice to make sure that I didn't misplace a number because this question is very easy to get all marks. It's also very easy to lose marks because if you miscount one thing, it will just mess up the whole table, right? Everything that you're counting from there on um, could be correct in its own right, but then the total of it will be wrong. So yeah, it, it, it could add up. Um, so you just make sure you count well, right? So six to 20, I count the number six to 20, could probably count them twice if you get the same number, that means probably you're right. And then I get 12, 21 to 40, count all the numbers that are between 21 and 40, cross them out to make sure I'm accounting for everything. So if something is crossed, not crossed out, I know that I miscounted it or I didn't count for it. So these are just kind of checkpoints to make sure that I'm doing this right, right? So if I count those numbers, count them twice, I get 19. And I do 41 to 120. I can the same thing, cross them out and count them. So the bottom row, I can just say that's 14 and then count the other ones at the top. Right, um, and that will give me 18. So now the cumulative frequency, cumulative just means total or um, addition of that. So it's addition of frequency. So the first one obviously is just 19. And then the second one, I'll add 19 to the second box. So 19 plus 16, I get 35. 35 plus 12, I get 47. 47 plus 19, I get 66. 66 plus 18, I get 84. So that's the cumulative frequency, just adding these numbers, right? So Another checkpoint is that this 84, I know in that table there's 84 numbers. They told me there's 84 students. Or if I didn't know, I'll just do 14 times 5. So that last number, the cumulative frequency, should equal the total numbers. So 14 times 5 in this case, 14 um, uh, columns or 14 numbers in each row times 5 uh, rows, 84. So if I get an 83 or 82, that means I miscounted one of those frequency stuff. So I might have to go back, but here it's just a check to just my consciousness needs to know that, you know, everything is okay. So moving on to the next thing, which is summary statistics. So in summary statistics, they could ask anything at this stage. They could ask probability. What is the probability of a student picked at random having traveled less than seven kilometers to college? Or what is the probability a student picked at random traveled between 49 and 60 kilometers to, to college? Or something like that, they could ask what is the mean uh, distance, or they could ask what is the uh, median, what is the mode, what is the interquartile range, what is the uh, quarter one, what is quarter two, etc. So they could start asking all the summary statistics, right? In this case, they just happen to ask these three median, Q1, and Q2. Q1 and Q2 just means quarter one, quarter three, right? 
that's the short end of saying that. So let's just work on this. The three most common summer statistics are median mode and mean. So it's easy to, if you're not a statistician or if you're not doing statistics a lot, to confuse those. And uh, I'll just summarize them here. So the way I remember how to distinguish them is that median, mid, the start of median, mid, and then middle, they sound the same. So I know median is the middle number. So the middle, the number right in the middle of the data. Mod kind of sounds like most. So the most common number, that's the mod. Mean, I don't really have a way to remember that because that's the most common one, that's the average. So normally when people say average, they mean the mean. Although all those three, mod, median, and mean, the averages, uh, the mean is usually called the average. People usually interchange those in some softwares as well, like um, like Excel, the, the, they call the average the mean, right? So yeah, just total number. If you add all the numbers, the ones, the twos and everything, the sixes, add all of them, divide by the total number of numbers, 84. You get the mean, right, the average. So they could have asked any of those. In this case, they asked the median, right? So you need to be able to distinguish them. So, and on a test, any one of them could be asked. So you need to be comfortable with any one of those. Right, so the median then, middle number. So if you have even number of numbers, like our case with 84 numbers, 84 is an even number, how do I know that? 84 can be divided by 2 without a remainder. So it doesn't give a decimal that answer if I divide by 2. 84 divided by 2 is 42, no remainder, no comma. That means an even number. So if it's an even number, that means there will be two numbers in the middle there. So there will be two numbers in the middle, and then I have to take an average of those numbers to get the median, right? But then if the numbers were like 83 or 87 or 63, any number that is odd, that cannot be divided by two without a remainder, then there'll be only one number in the middle, right there in the middle, and I'll just take that value. So because they're all they're even, which is always the first thing you should do, are your numbers odd or even? They are even, so I know that I'm gonna get an average of the two middle numbers, but how do I find the middle numbers? Well, I divide 84 divided by 84 divided by two, I get 42. So 42 means the 42nd number is one of the middle numbers, and the 43rd number, so the one after it. So the 42nd and the 43rd number, these are the numbers in the middle of that data. So I count which number is the 42nd. Again, I can use the fact that each row is 14, so 14, 28, etc. I know my number is between these two rows here, right? So I can count faster because I know they are 14. I don't have to count from one. I can just say 14, 28 and find kind of where to zero in, right? So this is actually the 42nd number and this is the 43rd number. So I take those and I get an average of them. So both of them are 15. 15 plus 15 divided by 2. I put that in the calculator and get 15. That's the median. Right. Q1, quarter 1. Quarter kind of sounds like quarter. So they're fine. They're all looking for the quarter range, right? So what is the number or the amount of distance that a quarter of those people would be under, right? So first quarter of Q1, you find a quarter of those numbers first. So a quarter of 84, or 84 divided by 4, or 84 times a quarter, or times 0 0.25, whichever way you want, you get 21. So the 21st value is right there in the quarter. That's the quarter value, right? But that's not the answer, right? That's the 21st value, but you actually have to find what value is it. So I just go in the data, count, and find number 21. Number 21 in this case would be the number 2. Number 2 um, in that data, so if I, if I was to count the first row is 14, and then 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So this is the 21st number. So 21st number, that means um, that number 2. So the value is 2. So key 1 equals 2. So if I say 2 is the qu quarter 1, that means a quarter of the students traveled 2 or under kilometers, right, which makes sense. And then Q3 is just 3 quarters of that. So I want to find how many kilometers with three quarters of the students travel. Okay, so uh, I'll just go um, three over four times 84, or 84 times three divided by four, or 84 times 0 0.75. Though the whole means the same thing. Three quarters of 84 is the 63rd number. 63 is not the answer, it's the number where the answer is. So it's the 63rd value. So I count the numbers, I find number 63. Number 63 is actually 36. So 36 kilometers is the amount that three quarters of the students would have traveled, right? 
So those are the answers. And then, of course, just about mod, this is how you find the mod. One way is obviously to write all the numbers and find how many they are. So 0, you have 6, 1, you have 13, 2, you have 5, etc., etc. That's one way to do it. But you could also use visualization, right? It's a little bit more risky because you could, if, if, if like, uh, things, numbers that are really close in terms of the amount that they have. Uh, but in this case, it's kind of obvious that you have a lot of ones there, right, than any other number, right? The other one that comes close would be the zeros. You know, you have about half the number of zeros as you have ones. But every other number is just one or two or four or three numbers. You have three tens and so on. But then the most common number there is one. So it's an important statistic, but just finding the most common distance that people travel to is 13. Maybe that, that's not the, the one that will be useful in your data. Maybe you want to find the median one. Maybe you want to find the average uh, or the mid mean. All of these are they're important in, in their respect. Right. Um, so that was this question. And uh, thank you for listening. So these are the answers. 15 for median, 9 for Q1, and then 36 for Q2.